What do you do during seasons of opportunity? Let me give you four keys. How to maximize your seven years of abundance. Number one. What do you do during seasons of abundance? Build capacity. Number one, build capacity. Spiritual capacity. Intellectual capacity. Build capacity. The days of abundance are not days of over-celebration. The days of abundance are not the days to be carried away by the flatteries of men. I've told you, there is a weakness in men. There is something that honor does to us. There is something that celebration does to us. When you become a superstar or you aspire to become a superstar, I am telling you there is a side effect. The side effect is that it makes us short term in our memory. We, we fail to think. Now that you have time, now that you have someone giving you pocket money, now that you are still employable, you have not retired yet. It looks like you have 25 years left. It looks like you have 20 years. You have 15 years. You have 10 years. 10 years looks like a lot of time until you see what comes with it. That's the time to build spiritual capacity. You are praying. You are a student, for instance, you still have time. There's no reason to go and be celebrating nonsense and be wasting your time. No. The little time you have, you are studying. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things. You are listening to teachings. You are spiritualizing your mind. You are getting materials, buying books, not shoes, not clothes. Leave those things. They will follow you when you are transformed. Focus on your transformation. The money that young people waste on useless things. Things that have no profit as far as the future is concerned. If you can be patient, that money, multiples of it will look for you a thousand times. The days of abundance are not the days to look for invitation. I am a music minister. Please invite me. I am a man of God. God called me to be an apostle and a prophet. Be patient. There are so many sermons you are going to preach in your life, you will need grace. Go right now and be obtaining the grace. Don't be running around looking for the invitation. Build capacity. Build capacity. That's what you do during times of abundance. Build capacity. Capacity to last. Capacity to defend the grace that is now given to you. Get knowledge. Get knowledge. Don't be a local champion. Get knowledge. Number two, what do we do with our seasons of opportunity? Number two, build relationships. Oh, write that in capital letter. Write that in capital letter. Build relationships. Productivity and fruitfulness are relational. War betides you if you do not have anybody to help you during your season of famine. There are families today everything they eat is what they worked for everything they wear is what they bought everywhere they go, they go is where they took themselves to no 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 it should not be like that relationships are powerful they are advantageous connection they are systems of leverage there has to be somebody in your life who likes you enough to be able to invest their time their reputation their credibility on your destiny are we blessed? Yes, sir. I don't have capital. Capital is not the only thing. Relationships can pay. I met a gentleman one time and he told me something. He said, I don't know what one of these schools in Africa, and he said that he had been looking for school fees. To, to collect his certificate accumulated. I think their school, they allowed them to pay to steal school like student loans. And he needed a total of, let's say, three to 500,000 to go and collect his certificate since 2016. And while he was telling me, he sounded sympathetic. 
And I told him from 2016 till today, didn't you have classmates? Didn't you go to church? Did everybody fail who you used to know? You mean nobody out of the hundreds of people that God gave you the privilege of relationship with. You did not bless anybody enough to remember you. There are people, what is 300,000? What is 400,000 for someone? It is painful to know someone who is not willing to help you because you trivialize relationships. Hear me, dear ones. Some of you will be in departments. Some of you will be in your faculty. You will see people whose shoes are not, are not something to write home about. And you ignore them. You are looking for only your tribesmen. You are looking for only those you used to know. And yet your heart is not open to discern what God is doing. A few years down the line, those people will be CEOs and multi-millionaires. You will not evolve out of somewhere and come and say, bless me, based on what? There are so many people today claiming portions of people's successes based on my father used to know you. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. Build relationships. Relationships are costly investments. It will cost you your ego. It will cost you your time. It will cost you your sacrifice. Can I tell you this? There are people who will never suffer in this life as far as this life is concerned. If they don't give their life to Christ, for instance, except they go to hell. But as far as this life is concerned, they, they have connected themselves to too many people who will never forget them. I met a gentleman I used to know years ago. I was so happy to see him. How are you? Greeted me. We exchanged pleasantries. What are you doing now? So, this and that. I said, really? And then I remember. I said, no, 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 no. You shouldn't be in this position. Cut the long story short. God lifted that person and exalted that person overnight. There are some prayers you will not need to pray if you understand relationships. It's a covenant. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? There are some of us, the way you are going with your life now, the truth is that you have already secured the destiny of your children. People will love you too much. Every time they see you, they remember the quality of your relationship. And they will say, over my dead body, there are people today who will never be stranded of house rent. There are people today, even if you decide to be lazy, your relationship has placed you on honor and salary forever. Everybody likes me. Think well now, in light of what I'm teaching. It's a window that will not always be open. You invest in relationships. The person will remember the day that he came late and you got up and said, please sit down. Ah, no, 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 I came late for Koinonia. No, sit down. I can't stand. You will think he has forgotten you. You just carry 20% of your time and invested it. Are you seeing now? Yes, sir. After Koinonia, someone is going home, broke, and the Holy Ghost tells you it's just 70 naira. Please pay for bike for this man. Sir, can I pay for bike for you? I don't know you. Who are you? No, Koinonia here. Just to bless you. And you pay that 70,000. Uh, that 70 naira. And you don't know that that 70 naira is an estate you just paid. After 10 years, he will see you and your wife and your children. Listen to me. And he will say, I remember you. Sheung, are you not the one in... You say, Zari. I say, what are you doing now? I say, well, God is faithful. He say, come. God has helped me today. Please come. Let me give you one place. I'm giving you... Listen, this, this wisdom key will bless you for the rest of your life. There are some of you, you are not represented in anybody's story. Anybody's story. Nobody can make reference to you to say, you prayed for me. While I was looking for someone to pray for, you were there. You were not there. While my child was crying, 10 naira, uh, what, what they, this thing they give children, um, Bobo, you did it, you just watched the child, uh, how, why do children cry like this? You are subtracting, let me tell you what you are doing, listen, 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 take me very serious, you are subtracting from the years of abundance, you hear someone is getting married, God gives you 100,000, you can't take 10,000 and say, look, just to bless you. Can I tell you, when you make efforts to sincerely be friendly from a pure heart, you are making investments for your tomorrow. There is something that being blessed does. 
it gives you the ease to be a blessing and not everybody will struggle forever the person you are seeing who cannot eat today tomorrow you will get to a point where well to become like like the sands of the seashore and at that point all that will be left is who do i need to bless not will i bless there are people today every day they are giving houses in this country there are people giving jobs in this country no interview there are some of us the names of our parents are keys it can open any door there are some of us the names of our parents are padlocks they look at your name and say which one it's all right uh, you go you hear from us and yet you're a first class student you must make up your mind that your name will become a key to your child there are children today who are head boy head girl regard even if they are not taking first position because something about the relationship of their father and the principal is his school he can do whatever he wants to do with his school look at me who is in your life now sincerely helping you why do you have to call people before they help you calculate your age who sees you as what he's he's helping today there are many preachers they love god they are born again they focused on god but they ignored men you pay for the speaker yourself you pay for the keyboard yourself you are getting married even the committee of friends they come together and you have to pay them again what sort of a a, a human being are you Make up your mind from tonight that you are going to invest in relationships. You don't need many, but the few that you have. Your roommates may be there. You are the only person who is privileged among them. Keep hiding your food. You don't know what you are doing to yourself. Are we together? Keep washing your plates alone. You don't know what you are doing. Don't, don't follow all this nonsense that people do in films and movies it would destroy you those people are active go through the sacrifice now look like a fool now there is a kind of business where you don't sell anything you give like a mad person but the returns are guaranteed is the business of men Your roommate comes back with five carryovers as if he returned from a funeral. You are the first to say you are an embarrassment to redemption. You continue. He will remember you in the future. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. One day you will be a doctor. It's all right. Things happen in life. And regardless what it is, don't worry. Where will I get the last school fees now? I'm in final year. I'm having to spill over. My father will kill me. Look, there's a little scholarship I used to collect. It's not much, it's 100,000. I can spare 20,000 from it. It may not do you much, but let it encourage you. You did this for me from a sincere heart. After 10 years, your 20,000 has grown into honor. As that man rises, your 20,000 makes you rise too. You never knew your 20,000 was a living thing. I show you why many people never rise look at great men for some of you who have had the privilege to work with great men their lives are purely based on history and based on relationship look at politicians there are sons and daughters today who become governors who become senators not because of any capacity i remember you they were about to shoot me in 1981 i remember and they laugh retired generals and they're all laughing so what are you doing now my son wants to get this oh don't worry hello sir we found the person please give this person and you are there praying and your prayer request right on earth right in your presence was given to someone may god deliver us from ignorance yeah. see as i'm talking to you now there are some of you you are seeing why you hate your family don't hate your family but learn from the mistakes they had opportunities and yet they wasted it they insulted everybody around them you had a house help the house help who wake up by five you had names that you would give her stupid girl where are you ma she will come whereas that's the person who would deliver you in old age and the holy spirit is saying don't do this 
she will come, Madam, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw you crying in the future. Is you are the witch that this is. Mm -mm. You beat the girl and it's, it's remnants of food you give her. There's a special plate. Plates that they gave her souvenir for wedding. Where are you? Yeah, come and take your own. And the girl is eating with gratitude. And you do not know that time and chance happens to them all. One day, one correct born again man who fears God with fire and wealth will now come and not even see your children. Will now see that one and say, I like this one. Say, sorry. Um, I'm not sure you know what you are saying. There are others say, no, I, my heart has seen what I like. We die here. Who we'll carry, listen. I spoke about relationship and you are now excited for nothing. Sit down. Are we together? God will use that man to carry that young girl and wipe the tears of her generation, not just her family. Whereas someone likes you and says, tell me about your mother. I've had that story before. So she's the one. I will never marry you till Jesus comes. Why must we do this kind of thing for ourselves? There are some of our loved ones who had the opportunity to give jobs to people. Did they give them jobs? No. They were in positions where they would have the names of 100 people. They didn't help anybody. Until one day stroke hit them and now the company had to retire them Why do you want people to bless you when you didn't raise anybody? Don't you know when you raise people it's a cushion for your own self? There are music artists today who did not raise anybody They ate alone as God was lifting them other younger ones were coming and say listen to my song You say what is this? I received it by the Spirit. Say, no, it's not the Holy Ghost that gave these kind of songs. Instead of you to encourage the person, don't worry, you can rise. Listen to me. I want to open your eyes tonight to see that some of you, what you are doing is that you are not investing your 20% for the years that are coming. There is nobody in your life who you bless intentionally. You are just expecting people to bless you. No. We have many children in Koinonia here. Which one have you ever bought something and told the mother, be blessed? We have many people in school here, young people. Some of them, their school fees is 1,000, 2,000. You see the, the foolishness we do. Valentine comes, you see people acting like fools. They do all kinds of things. Waste money that even the girl's parents have never given her. And yet there are people here. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm waking you up. There has to be someone who will tell you this thing. Fake lives for nothing. You are a student. You are dressing like a CEO. You are not there. Buying expensive things whereas you would have used that money. Buy five books on prayer. Find people that you see God already lifting them. Sir, this is, I thought this would bless your life. One day you are in a restaurant and you see someone arguing, almost getting embarrassed because of 10 naira. Show up quickly. That's an opportunity for an investment in the future. And say, sir, don't worry. I don't know you, but I've seen your face coming on. Oh, really, please. Let me have the honor to bless you. You sit down in the car. You just get an alert of 10,000. And the transport fare is just 200 naira. An opportunity to sow into your life. By the grace of God, this is one thing I did with my life. And I thank God for it today. Because the person who may not be able to help you yesterday, certainly will be able to help you tomorrow. Is God blessing us? Let's hurry up. What do you do with your seasons of opportunity? Number one is build capacity. Number two is build relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives i think i already stated that acts chapter 9 please quickly just to add scriptures to it selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives this is what you should do with your seasons of abundance selflessly the word the key word is selfless selflessly invest let me tell you this during your seasons of plenty forget about yourself be of less important less importance pour your heart 
into people not because you are expecting something in return sincerely pay the price to build people pay the price to be part of the stories of people who sits on the throne Acts chapter 9 from verse 36 help us media we're reading to 42 now watch this Peter came to a place in Joppa the Bible says in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha look up please which when translated is Dorcas the Bible says who was always doing what talk to me please she was always doing good and helping the poor she had an opportunity she never allowed the poor like that she did good and she helped the poor 37 about that time aha uh -huh, here you have come again time she became sick and died and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room 38 leader was near Joppa so when the disciples heard that peter was in leader they sent two men to him and urged him come please at once peter went with them and when he arrived look at this look at this look at this when he arrived he was taken upstairs to the room hallelujah look at those who gathered all the people she invested in all the widows stood around him doing what crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made for them while she was still with them while that woman was alive she would not see poor people go like that i may not have much but let me add a smile to you when she died the widow said no way no way they stood and said peter do something the widows provoked his anointing and they said this woman who will now do it for us this was the woman who was there for us may you have someone who speaks for you oh. may you have someone who speaks for you in the name of jesus may you have someone who can speak for you and bring to remembrance what you have done for the kingdom peter provoked by their tears he sent them all out of the room and he got down on his knees he didn't stand to pray this kind of prayer he knelt down and turning towards the dead woman he said tabita get up and she opened her eyes she would have died like that and he would have finished but something about her investing in lives he said i shall not die but live and declare there is a way you are so useful to kingdom come that is not only God that will pray for your longevity. Men too will say, may God leave you for us. Can I tell you this? Help them please. Listen, there are people today, look at me. There are people today, the goodwill of men is almost like prophecy on their lives. Do you know that goodwill carries power? Whether born again or not. The woman that tries Akara, her blessing is on you. The one who sells bread, his blessing is on you. Mama that you do not know, her blessing is on you. Then there is the prophetic blessing on you. Then there is one who you visited during your birthday. This, this myriads of blessings, you think they don't matter. One boss man somewhere may not be born again, but he told you, let it be well with you. I tell you, heaven honors it. There are people who, when you see them rise, it's not just a product of their personal work with God alone. They are surrounded by the goodwill of people. Learn this lesson. Tabitha, no, you can't go like that. Who then will feed the widows? My life today, by the grace of God, is surrounded by intercessors all over the world. Some who have been called by God and others who are benefactors of things by his grace that i have done for them who have vowed in life let me tell you this there are people today if you carry a gun to kill me not everybody but there are people who will stand and receive it and die first it is over their dead body may you have such people in your life it does not happen by being a man of god it happens through the sacrifice of investment If Baba Deboye today lifts his hand and says, People, my car just spoiled. What do you think is going to happen? Many car stands. 
will be emptied because one man who grew with a generation passionately pouring his heart to them a life of selfishness let them do it for me is a recipe for pain in the days that are coming I remember many years ago I went to preach somewhere and I saw that the ministry was struggling really struggling and they put together a little honorarium and I knew that these people don't have this capacity probably they borrowed money just to show honor I called the pastor and his wife I told him I said look I thank you they were crying I said I love you people I just came to bless you I didn't come to receive money I know that you people are working and the Lord gave me an instruction I sowed a dangerous seed for them prayed for them and told them may God bless you till tomorrow those people my, my song is on their lips. Sometimes they send me text message and they identify themselves as people who I bless. This is more than maybe 10 or 11 or 12 years ago. Who remembers you for what you have done in their lives? Where are the widows that remember what you are doing for them? Some of you, even your family members can't, re can't remember you because you've not done anything for anybody. It is time for change. Are we together? Number four, what do you do during your seasons of abundance? Listen, the fourth thing you do is study those who have maintained relevance two seasons. That's the fourth thing you do. Study. Study those who have maintained relevance. While you have the time, while the dark days have not come, pay the price. Study those who have gone ahead of you, who have survived seasons. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience. Follow them. Hebrews 6, 12. It says to follow them who through faith and patience. Go back to KJV. Have obtained the promise. A man who is celebrating 40 years in ministry, celebrating 35 years in ministry, 45 years in ministry, even if that person was playing, I think you can't play for 35 years. You can't play for 45 years. Herein lies the arrogance of our generation. We insult people who have gone ahead of us. We downplay the sacrifices of successful people. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, Do not talk about anybody's results until you have twice that result. There are people who have not built anything, they have not raised anybody in their lives. But there is no man of God they will not talk about all across the globe. No, it ought not to be so. Respect results and respect people who God has honored to get results the kingdom's way. Are we together? Study them. Study them. You know, in your world, you will always think you know until you see a horizon that is higher than that. Let me show you one person who utilized these seasons very well. Luke chapter 16. Very quickly, please, from verse 1. And the disciples, and he said unto his disciples, look up please. There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So the rich man was angry at his steward. <laughs> and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For thou mayest no longer be steward. Verse 3. And then the steward said to himself, Jesus is teaching now. What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. And to beg, I am ashamed. So what is his strategy? I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. You hear the man thinking now. Jesus is teaching. Verse 5. What did he do? <laughs> he called every one of his Lord's debtors. And said unto the first, How much owest thou you, my Lord? Verse 6. And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said, Take the bill. Sit down quickly and write 50. Watch what this guy is doing now. The wisdom. This is somebody who is not born again. 
he has seen trouble come and he knows that ah, if they drive me from this estate i don't have anything so let me quickly do something with these relationships and he said to another how much owest thou and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said unto him take thy bill and write 80. and the lord commended the unjust steward now god was not teaching to cheat he was just saying the man had sense to know that he could lean on those relationships because seasons were about to change in his life are you getting the morale now he commanded the he commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light nine and i say to you make yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail they shall receive you into everlasting habitations what this means is not teaching you to go after money or go after all of these things the idea is that use your seasons of plenty as a leverage the moment you have fame you have blessings they pay you your salary you get some arrears don't eat everything alone remember to edge your impact in someone's life so that tomorrow you can have people who can stand by you stand with you support you support your family and help you if all you have in your life is your intellect if all you have in your life is your salary if all you have in your life is your business if all you have in your life is you and yourself you'll be in trouble in today's world hallelujah You now understand what God was doing when he told us that we will not sell our teachings. Now please, you're a pastor here. I'm not saying don't sell tapes. That's not what I'm saying. But this is a painful instruction. At the time God gave this instruction, the media ministry was the major, one of the major income generating revenues for ministries at that time. Books and this, aside from offerings and tithes. So that was a suicidal project. I know the quality of the things that I teach by the Spirit. Why would we not sell them to at least generate some revenue for the ministry? And God said, no, it shall not be that way. Put it online and let people have it free. And I said, so be it. My God, my God, fast forward. Whatever God tells you, Ba, He doesn't tell you for today. He tells you for your 10 years, for your 20 years. That's why I call it an investment. There are nations today there are people today who forever for the rest of my life the lifetime of this ministry and many who are connected to this grace there are certain levels you will not go lower than again you do not know the extent of the impact that these teachings have brought for people obedience selflessly giving yourself to the lord lamentations 3 27 as I conclude the Bible says it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth that means there is timing for everything bear your yoke now go through the sacrifice now I love you that's why I'm sharing with you this truth examine your life now the idea of me, myself, it is only me and me and me alone is a recipe for disaster and destruction. And let me tell you this. If you go and start selecting people to bless because you want something in return, you will be surprised that that harvest will still not come. The harvest comes not just on the basis of giving, but the sincerity of your heart. If I give you something today because I'm expecting you to remember me tomorrow, it's a joke. That, that is business. That's not love. 